Hello there, person that should probably be doing something far better with their time rather than watching a YouTube video that they're probably using to procrastinate from doing something actually useful. Today, we're going to absolutely break your mind and numb just everything that you loved about this world. Because yes, <laughs> we're talking about TikTok. And allow me to introduce you to today's subject of interest, Katie Bougie. Sorry, uh, this whole thing has genuinely warped my mind and just really made me just lose all forms of hope in humanity. Because this is Katie Bougie, a TikToker who's recently been going viral. She's recently been getting a lot of traction on this application. And uh, it's not going viral for good reasons, folks. It's not like people were being like, wow, Katie, I love those blooming TikToks you were uploading. And instead, no, Katie's been going viral because she was called out for uploading multiple TikToks of where she inappropriately had danced over her son. And inappropriately, I mean she twerked over her son, whilst very, very creepy lyrics played in the background, and people were commenting on these TikToks saying, wow, the son clearly, you know, wants it. And I'm thinking, that's a child. This is a very weird situation, and of course, it does bring in the question, which I think I've asked him multiple times at this point of, should we ban TikTok? Because I'm thinking it's, it's, it's getting to the point of where maybe we should, people. Go to the comment section and just comment yes. Even if you disagree with me, it's time we got this app and just, rather than removed it from, you know, the app store, we removed it from human subconsciousness. Okay, maybe that was a little bit overblown, but what I'm trying to... What I'm trying to say here is that instead of maybe removing TikTok as a whole, we need to just kind of remove a certain subcategory of TikTok from our brains and just put it in the bin and never look at it again, you know? Maybe we need to remove TikTok mums. And I know you're thinking, Fraser, I'm a mum and I've got TikTok. That doesn't make you a TikTok mum. A TikTok mum is a very, very specific type of mum. And we are going to go through it today, just like we've done in the past, because this is becoming a serious issue. And I'm laughing because it's genuinely terrifying. This entire thing is making me think, wow, it's social media. Maybe, maybe it does need to just get removed. So yes, my friends, let's go into the world of TikTok moms. A TikToker by the name Katie Boogie or Katie Bougie uh, released a video where she was dancing inappropriately uh, on her son's downstairs area. Uh, here's one of those videos. My friends, if God existed, they've left. <laughs> they've, they've seen this and they thought, you know what, boys? But I'm, I'm, I'm done. Sorry, now I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. And neither can I. Because why would you post this? And secondly, why would you post this? And thirdly, most importantly of all, why would you post this? And fourth, of course, the really good question. Why would you post this? And fifth, why would you post this? On TikTok. Oh, I, oh, well, I know, I know. It's because, uh, it's because I was trying to that whole thing of uh, child exploitation does really well in the TikTok algorithm. That's, that's why that old chestnut. <laughs> God help us, because. What What is this? Now, yes, my friends, this is Katie, as I previously introduced, and this is obviously one of the more horrific things that I've personally ever seen on social media. Because not only is it another example of a parent on social media realizing that, yes, they can use their children in a way to get views on social media, even if it does come under the case of child exploitation, it also leads us into the just-in-general trend of this. The trend of of using your kids in disturbing ways to get famous? It sounds messed up, but this is very much what we're facing today. And whilst people on social media are calling this out, as I said earlier, there are comments out there of people simply enabling this behavior, and if not celebrating this behavior, and it is absolutely disturbing, and has only led to Katie herself making comments like this about her own son. He knows what's up. Devil am Why? 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 I'm his kitty bestie. No, no, all you're going to be bestie of is probably social services because they are going to be contacting you probably very soon, just like they have in the past. And we are going to go into the issues of CPS and, and you know, social services being terrible, but why in this situation maybe it, it is actually needed because it does get dark and it is a very good example of social media plaguing the brains of people and making 
making them think that they should use their child in order to get some form of social media clout and why this is becoming an ever-growing trend and getting progressively worse and worse. But what makes it worse is people are gradually becoming more defensive of this type of thing. I know for the most part right now people are speaking against this but I can't help but notice in this particular situation I have noticed quite a few people more than usual being defensive of this type of thing saying that Katie Bougie is merely being I, I guess having uh, having fun with her child having fun question how is the kid having fun in this Stop doing this. Stop justifying this. You're thinking, Fraser, why are you losing your mind in this video? Because it keeps happening. It keeps on happening. Why? This needs to stop. For one, why would they record this and put this on social media if they were just having fun? I think it's obvious that Katie Bougie knows that this was a very provocative TikTok account that she's got here, and she knows that it's going to get a lot of attention because people will naturally be upset, because exploitation of children is a very sensitive issue, hence I make videos about it, and hence a lot of people do actually view these videos because people care about this sort of thing, and she knows that, and she knows that she can exploit this. This isn't a mother and son having fun. This is a mother taking advantage of her child by exploiting them on social media. And the worst part is, is I don't even think that we as human beings truly understand yet the implication that having children on social media is going to have. I, I really don't think that we have seen the full extent of the effects of kids being regularly posted on the internet. I think it's going to be bad. I think it's going to negatively impact these children's lives down the road. And in in particular with this situation in KD, I think this kid is clearly being exposed to things that somebody at such a young age should so obviously not. Certain behaviors, certain just beh things in general which I just don't think a kid should be exposed to, i.e. just adult behavior. Children should be, in a way, kind of caged off from all of that sort of thing, but sadly here you have a mother who is just willing to do anything to get social media numbers, even if that means negatively impacting her child's future, and just negatively impacting him now. Because yes, whilst the effects are bad, there are obviously always going to be creeps in the comment sections of these things, and honestly, anybody defending this sort of thing is, in my opinion, a creep. You did nothing wrong. He clearly wants it. That's a child. It's a child. What are you doing? Why are you saying this for? And then there's also, he called it like a, it's all mine here. What? What's a kid? Are you fucking mental? What is wrong with you? And the man replies saying, he know he my man for real. And if you're thinking, well, Fraser, it's not that bad, it's not that bad. It is bad. And if you are thinking it's not bad, you are yourself mental. But then let's add in the context of the lyrics in the background of some of these TikToks. Let me, let me read you, because I can't play it because of YouTube copyright, but let me read you some of the lyrics being played in the background of these TikToks of where this mother twerks over her child and uploads it onto TikTok. Let me read some of these lyrics. Told her bend it over. Pussy fat. Pussy boring, bo pouring. Sorry, sorry, I just can't do this. Main bitches say they pissy, pussy good. Pussy boring. My Airbnb neighbors are going to genuinely think that I am severely mentally ill. And they are absolutely correct. And so by saying that, you should feel bad for me and subscribe to this YouTube channel right now because my friends, I need it. Reading things like this makes me get even more mentally ill. So please, for the love of God, just subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I'm sure the song's good. I'm not saying the song's bad, but I'm saying when you play the song in a TikTok with a child, it's obviously wrong. And sadly, this isn't the only time we've seen this sort of thing. As I said at the beginning of this video, this is an ongoing trend on social media of people realizing that, yeah, they can use their children in provocative ways on TikTok, for example, to get views. Because not only is that algorithm very easy to get views on if you are rage baiting, but it means that it's obviously going to keep on happening to a regular extent. Back in 2020 with Lovely Peaches, for example, it was reported 
stated that she had her child taken away from her because she was putting her child in dangerous situations and using the kid for terrible things on the internet and naturally that got Peaches a lot of attention. And it seems that, you know, it's the same thing here of where there was actually a live stream of where Katie is shouting at her baby saying that CPS is going to take you and you're going to go live with a bunch of white people. And I know as a white man, we are the, the scary. I just think it's a bit strange to, to shout at a baby who, for one, doesn't understand what you're actually saying. But for two, why would you threaten your kid with CPS? It's blooming mental. What are you doing? But just take a look at this clip. It really only resonates how awful this is. And the fact it's on a live stream just says to me, this entire thing is somebody doing this for attention. You could say, oh, her mental health, it's probably not great. And I don't doubt that. But when it's being broadcasted on a live stream, I think that's obviously deliberate. And she obviously knows a clip like that, despite her not having many followers, is definitely going to go viral she think it's a f game and you think it is too and the same reason how you wanted to get in the car but you see the f that we gotta go through a person who really could f gives a care about you wouldn't do you like this and i keep telling you and you keep trying to be naive like me but you're you'll understand one day because just know you're finna be in cps care you're finna go with some white people because you're, you're sure, sure as fuck not coming back here. And you're sure as fuck not going with me after this because she done called the police. So I hope you're fucking happy. Because you're sure as fuck not coming with her. And I'm sorry, but your daddy is in jail. Sit up here and sugarcoat that shit. Sat up here and said intentionally she will call CPS on me. So what the she just called the police. It's just so obviously a really disturbing clip. It very much seems that she is more concerned for her own safety and just in general her revenue stream via social media views. It's not even like she's getting like actual money from it. She's just getting clicks and attention from it. And it's very negative attention. But it seems that she's kind of concerned that she's going to lose that. Concerned about what's going to happen to her rather than what's going to happen to her actual child and the mental well-being of her child. And that is a recurring trend throughout all of these TikTok mother exploitation things. And I do need to say, it's obviously not just mums when it comes to parents being bad on TikTok. There are also bad fathers, and we will go into that in other videos. But right now, it seems that this is a weird thing of mothers being very inappropriate with their children on TikTok. And we need to go and look at the Bebop and Bebe situation, for example, which I spoke about in the past, of where, yes, there was a very weird situation of a lot of theories going around about this mother with the Bebop and Bebe social media profile of where you have a mother, a daughter, and a son. Now, a lot of the theories going around about them were complete bullshit, but there definitely was a lot of weird stuff out there. For example, the son came out and started speaking to people in private saying that he wasn't happy with what was going on in the TikTok, he felt forced into the TikToks, and rather than a mother seeing that and thinking, oh, maybe I should pay attention to the fact that my child thinks he's being forced into doing this stuff, I should actually be a good parent. No, she she didn't do that. She actually forced her son into making a TikTok apology, which seems like a fucking hostage video, where she makes him say that he liked being famous. Like, that's the important issue here. Not the fact that you have a teenager who is just in general very clearly not happy. So, first off, I want to apologize to my mom and my sister Viva. I lied and I hurt them. I hurt their business, what they were trying to do, something that they enjoyed. And it was something that I shouldn't have done. It was very stupid of me. And I'm very sorry to both of them and to everything that they were trying to accomplish. I made a lot of mistakes and went somewhere and did stuff that I wasn't supposed to. And what did you lie about? That I was forced. Say it. That I was forced. Were you ever forced? No. Were you ever threatened? No. Was there any consequences to not doing a video? No. Did you like it at the end, being famous? 
Yeah. Yeah, it's such a weird clip, and it's a very, very weird situation. If you want to know more, links in the description for that. I did cover that in the past. But I do need to add that, yes, it is different to the KD situation. It is a completely different story and scenario, but it does come under the same sort of category of parents realizing that, yes, they can use their children for attention on TikTok, and when they start to face a bit of backlash, rather than prioritizing their child, they prioritize themselves, and it's just really, really sick and messed up to see. But with KD, I think one of the main issues that needs to be kind of highlighted in this situation is the fact that the kid can't consent to these videos. It's a kid, you know? They can't just consent to be in loads of random adult-themed videos. And I don't care what anybody says. These videos are adult-themed. I don't think I'm reaching here. But also, we don't even truly understand the negative implications yet that stuff like this on social media will have on children. But there are actual examples of it on Katie's own social media profiles of where she said in the past that her kid had started saying weird things like they were speaking about pussy talk. And whilst that post was from the past, I'm really not surprised and I really think it's a representation of the environment that this kid is growing up in. And especially when you look at the fact that this mum is making these TikToks now and there are people enabling it in her comment sections, I think that this environment is clearly only getting worse and I genuinely feel really bad for these kids. And honestly, I'm just quite worried for them. That's one of the main reasons I'm making this video, because not only is this an ongoing situation, but I'm worried about what is going to happen to the kid and how this is going to impact them in the future. And you may be thinking to yourself, well, has KD actually responded? Yeah, she has. When people came out with their concerns, she didn't be like, oh, you know, no, no, the kid's fine, the kid's fine. No, no, she didn't do that. She actually just responded in a way of where it's like, wow, you are really, really, really terrible. Y'all know what I really want to know? Why would me and my son do make y'all so mad? Firstly, it's not you and your son. It's you and what you make your son do. These are two very different things. Two different things which I think have a lot of different contexts between them because basically you and your son means that, oh, your son chose to do this. He made the optional consensual choice to do this. But in this case, it's not that. In this case, it's you set up a camera, you twerked on or in front or next to your son with weird music playing in the background acknowledging that yes this is going to be provocative and you knew that because you kept putting more and more videos out there of you doing this thing and you knew it was obviously going to enrage a lot of people and get a lot of clicks and you may say fraser how do you know this how do you know that oh you know she was trying to do this on purpose i i know that she was trying to do it on purpose because not well, because of speculation but because she actually confirmed it herself, saying that she is going to try and make things even worse. And if you were f***ing dull enough to get to this point of the video and not think that, oh yeah, she's obviously doing this for clicks and attention, well, my friends, she's confirmed it. She has confirmed that her child is pretty much like a, a walking social media algorithm potion. I, oh, I get the kid in the video and oh, I'm suddenly viral. And yes, you're not viral for Mr. Beast reasons. You're not going viral because, I don't know, you stood in the room for 24 hours. You're going viral because you capitalized on a horrific trend of mothers on TikTok realizing that they can use their child as rage bait to get attention. And my friends, it brings us back to the good old phrase of all negative press at the end of the day is good press because it is still just press. Just press, just press. Just, I can't speak English, you know what I'm saying here. Now, I do need to say that at this point of time, Katie's TikTok account has been taken down, but this doesn't mean that the situation is, is dead. It's not ongoing anymore. She has, since the account was suspended, made multiple new accounts, which have also been suspended. And on all of these accounts, she is pretty much doing the exact same thing. And when you go and look at other social media profiles of hers, which I won't show, I will just say what's happening. She is still arguing with people. She is still responding in negative 
negative way, she's refusing to take any of the criticism in, which only makes me even more worried about this child, and it makes me worried that this sort of thing is going to keep progressively happening in the future. And I understand that there has always been the debate of CPS being a, I guess, a morally good group, a group which we should resort to even in situations like this, but honestly, I'm really struggling to think what else can we do here? Do we just allow a child to be blatantly exploited on the internet for the rest of time until they get to a point of they're 18 years old and can leave the house? Because even then, if a child grows up in a household where they're clearly not being brought up in a in a good way, in a way where this kid can actually live their life like a regular child, how do we know that this isn't going to negatively impact their future and what they do in their, in their future life, even as an adult? You may say, Fraser, isn't that like a little bit far-reaching? Well, I don't know. Kids at that age in which Katie's son is in these TikToks are very, very vulnerable. This is the age of where really your life starts to shape up. You start to take a lot of things in, which will be with you for the rest of your life. So you may not realize that, but that very much is the case. At a young age, you are susceptible for just learning what's in your environment. And if it's an environment like this, I genuinely worry for this kid. But even then, when people were being like, oh, we're going to call CPS, rather than being like, oh, okay, I'm going to be a better parent. I'm going to do this and do that to make things better here. Instead, she just screamed at the child and, and, and seemingly blamed the child? And people may say to me, well, Fraser, she's not got many followers on social media. You're kind of only exposing the situation even more and bringing her more attention. I mean, you are right in when you say that. I, I I don't deny that. But what am I meant to do? Just sit here and be like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna ignore that this is even a thing and pretend that there's this kid not being taken advantage of and I'm gonna pretend that the mother isn't openly posting the effects of this on social media proudly. I'm not gonna ignore that just because of a smaller follow count. I think that would be absolutely bizarre because I am in the social media space and I see somebody trying to get into the social media space by doing horrific things and exploiting children. I don't think that's a good thing. I think that's a terrible thing and I don't want that in the social media space. I don't want it in general, but I don't want people to use the platforms that I use for my job to get that level of attention. I think it's disgusting, and I think this really, really needs to be looked into rather than ignored. But I do think that this whole thing does need to lead us into a conversation which I've kind of been hinting out throughout this video of, is this all becoming a bit of a trend? Are parents realizing that their children is like a, a, a get famous quick card? because it's starting to feel like that. As I previously mentioned, you've got Lovely Peaches who was using her kid in horrible ways to get attention. And then you've got people like Ren Eleanor. Whilst it is very different, you have a situation of where a mother refuses to really do anything when her child is blatantly being viewed by creeps on the internet to the point of where people are putting her child on their bedroom walls. And then you've got the Bebop and Bebe situation of when a child in the TikTok, you know, thing that they've got going on was upset and kind of worried about what's going on in that situation rather than being a good parent she forced him into doing an apology video were you ever forced no were you ever threatened no was there any consequences to not doing a video no did you like it at the end being famous yeah. Exploiting your child on the internet, and it sounds weird to say, does come in different shapes and sizes, different avenues. Yes, some things are worse than one thing, and the other thing is worse than the other thing, but at the end of the day, it's still child exploitation. Even if some is worse than the other, there is a child being exploited, and that will most likely negatively impact that child for the rest of their life. I do think there is this required conversation of just, in general, is child-related content moral on the internet? And yes, I'm not saying you can't post your kids here and or just post your kids in general, but when that child becomes a revenue stream or the focal point of attention on a social media profile, it's always usually going to lead to some bad things, in my opinion, because the person who owns that social media profile will do what they need to do to get 
clicks and that always leads to the most insane shit in literally any genre not just with parents but every single content related genre people are willing to do the more outlandish things to get views i know it's a completely different topic but look at logan paul in his vlogs he was very much known for doing the craziest things and when he had to do the most crazy crazy thing to become the biggest talking point in the world he he actually did that And it was immoral and wrong, but he did that because social media can pretty much rot your brain. And I think what's happening on TikTok right now is a really good indication of that. And you may say, well, Fraser, you're being really harsh on TikTok. And and you're not wrong. It's the same on YouTube. You've got the Eight Passengers family, who are absolutely horrific. The LeBron family, who I really want to do another video about. And you've got the Ace family, just a bunch of terrible family channels. And as I said earlier, the Daddy05 channel, who were literally removed from YouTube and had their children taken away from them because they use their children in horrific ways for attention on the internet. This is becoming a trend and a worrying trend from the worst of the worst to just people out there, parents realizing that yeah, they can use their children in weird provocative ways to get attention. And again, this doesn't mean they're doing anything necessarily immoral, but there is even the trend of mums and dads embarrassing their children on TikTok for attention. Later, babe. Bye, I love you. See ya, bruh. Bye, mommy. What in the fucking sweet home Alabama is going on here? This is just so, so weird. But this is, again, another parent realizing that, oh, if I use my kids on the internet for weird, weird things and you do not get attention, then some people will watch my videos. Weird. Stop doing it. Stop doing it. Just please, for the love of God, just fucking stop and be a normal parent. Take them to Disneyland. Something other than this. Because it's just tiring. It really, really is. And again, I need to bring up the whole uh, spectrum of what's wrong to really wrong uh, into these things. Because yes, they're all different. They really are. But there is a weird, I guess, pattern of parents becoming comfortable of just doing weird things with their kids on the internet. So my friends, to kind of come to some form of conclusion in this video, I think social media has kind of just absolutely decimated our brains. And it has caused so many people out there to just do the worst possible things in the name to just get a little bit famous for a couple weeks on social media. Even though it could possibly ruin their lives, ruin their loved ones' lives, they will do it because a million views on TikTok is like meth to some people out there. It's insane and it's genuinely worrying and I think we really, really, really need to look into the conversation of is it immoral to run accounts on social media dedicated to children? Because as I continue to cover these topics, I am focusing towards that angle of yeah, I think it may actually be that because Why does a kid need to have a social media profile ran by their parents other than the reason of, oh, it brings them monetization, views, money, whatever you want to call it? That's the only real reason, in my opinion, these parents run these accounts. And I don't really think they shy away from it. Ren Eleanor pretty much admitted to it. And that's just sad, in my opinion. Because if that becomes their job, the main source of income, then it's only going to lead to a child feeling so much unbelievable pressure and lead to them being put in even more exploited situations. Children are vulnerable. Children are learning, growing every single day, and they should not be the focal point of your mum or dad's social media profiles. Now, with the KD situation, it is different to some of the things I've mentioned throughout this video, and I will keep saying that, but at the end of the day, it does all come under the category of parents realizing that children are going to get easy views on the internet, and that can lead to some some profiles like Ren Eleanor, but that can also lead to some things like KD Bougie. And I think both are very worrying and we need to speak about it. So please, for the love of God, go to my comment section right now and let me know what you think about this whole thing. Because I would genuinely love to hear your opinion. I would genuinely love to just hear what you guys think about all of this. Please, for the love of God, like this video and please also comment 
beans? Something below? I don't really know. Just something to get the algorithm boosting this video. But yeah, also, I want to say, if there is a little bit of echo in this video, I apologize. I am in an Airbnb, and it, I just can't, I just can't break the echo. So you're just gonna, you're just gonna have to deal with it, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't know how many videos I'm gonna do here. Hopefully, not too many, because the echo is quite annoying, but you're gonna have to deal with it. That is the ending of the video. Please like it, comment on it, and everything good, and subscribe. Peace out, have a lovely day, and yeah. Please stop making profiles for your sons, daughters, and just anybody who you have given birth to. Thanks. Bye. Wait, not just given birth. You can adopt them too. Anything. Just stop, just stop making profiles for your kids!